Okay, so Phil, what's going on today? Well, we're going to eat a food, and then we're going to a film festival. What are they gonna show? They are going to show one of our fine Ridgeway Films productions <laughs> entitled Creepy Pasta, and it will not involve the chicken. It's, it's, I stole your chicken. I I yeah, I accidentally sent them I stole your chicken. In that case, I will have to strip in the theater and sing I am a little teapot with the hand motions. You nervous? How can one be nervous when Victor is a shit out? Play that music from SpongeBob. Okay. I know which one I'm What you're about to read is totally true. Once, I went out on my scooter through the local yard sales. Being a video game aficionado, I had my eyes peeled for collectible Nintendo wares that my parents might be throwing out. Nothing really caught my eye, that is, until I noticed one house across the street. This house also appeared to be having a yard sale, but there was only one table out in the front yard, with what looked like only a few items for sale, and there was a creepy old man behind the table. If there hadn't been other people within shouting distance, I wouldn't have even considered approaching this guy. Uh, do you have any Nintendo games? Pokemon. Black? It was labeled Pokemon and it was in a black cartridge, but this obviously wasn't the Pokemon Black that just recently came out. My first thought was that I had stumbled upon some kind of rare bootleg version of Pokemon, so I asked the man how much for it. Uh, how much for it? You can have it for free. Uh, thanks. Goodbye, man. Uh, my name is Stanley. Back at home, I fired up the old Game Boy and plugged in my new bounty. Everything seemed to be normal for a while. That is, until I ran across the infamous ghost Pokemon of the Lavender Tower. Uh, somehow, I managed to catch it. I thought this was pretty strange, since you can't do that in the normal version of the game. What was even weirder was that somehow this ghost Pokemon has a special move called Curse, which could kill other Pokemon, and their trainers. I wrote this off as a bug, or a weird design choice that they scrapped later, but then the game started spewing random garble onto the game screen, and when it wasn't doing that, it appeared to be sending me personal messages, despite the fact I hadn't entered my real name into the game. And then the messages turned into threats. I'm getting freaked out. I took the game out. I decided that I must have been really tired and went to sleep. All through the night, I couldn't stop thinking about the game. I had resolved to get rid of it the next day. That's when things really started going wrong. That's a lot. Uh, hello? Finish the game. Who is this? This is your ghost Pokemon. Finish the game, Stanley. I think you have the wrong number. I must kill again. You don't want me killing you next, do you?
if I was ever to have a life again, I had to finish what I'd begun. I had to finish the game. The further into the game I got, the stranger it became. The music got more and more distorted. There were fewer and fewer characters to talk to. What few characters showed up, my ghost Pokemon would kill without my commanding into, and it kept threatening me. I knew it was just a game, but I was seriously getting freaked out at this point. Finally, after what felt like a lifetime, I finished the game. Say, uh, how much for the Game Boy cartridge?
Okay, so the first award we're giving out tonight is the runner-up uh, award. So we have runner-up, we have best film and audience choice award. The runner-up film for this year, 2012 fourth annual University of Tulsa Spring Film Festival goes to Tunnel Vision, directed by Anna Bennett. <laughs> Winner of this year's Audience Choice Award is Octopi. Yeah. Yeah. 